Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video, sorry I'm tidying up my mess, um, I'm going to be kind of voicing over some footage that I got um, of me making this beaded bra <laughs> um, belt set, um, <clears throat> which I feel like is an exceptional first project for belly dancers, burlesque dancers, folks who want to get a little bit more into costuming but don't feel so strong into your sewing skills. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Click. Okay, so you can see here I just have a Vassarette bra from like Walmart, like not even kidding. Um, and I'm cutting the straps off because I want it to look as little like a bra as possible, <laughs> like a bra that you just bought off the shelf. Um, I'm trimming the little ends off of, like, there's three hooks you can choose from. I trimmed off two of them and just left the shortest one. Threading up my needle. I'm just using, like, I've got, like, one of those red wheels of needles. Just one of them out of there with some all-purpose thread. Struggling with my camera. Oh, God, Vaughn. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> uh, and these are welded rings, two-inch rings. Um, they'll be links to all the materials down in the video description um and I've just folded it over and then folded it over again it's in that second fold that I have the ring looped through and I'm just stitching kind of along the edging so I wanted to maintain some stretch here so I'm not stitching all down through that center area just on the very edges where there isn't a whole lot of stretch happening anyways um yeah just a couple of basting stitches across across there um and then stitching up the other side and I'm just whip stitching like you can see there it stretches out real nice um, and just how they kind of like lay like that you could um, you could rivet on some flowers or something we'll get to that later but now you can see I have some ribbon just from like Hobby Lobby um, and that's where, where I got the trim as well and I'm just holding up the different thicknesses and pieces. I have some that's like four inches wide, I have some that's two inches wide, and then some that's like, it was an inch wide, but then it got crinkled down quite a bit. And um, holding them up kind of see how I want what laid where, if that makes sense. Um, threading up my sewing machine. Uh, this is, again, I'll have a link to the kind of sewing machine that I use down in the video description. Um, but this is not a video about sewing machines, so I'm not gonna go too much into that. Um, but I want to line this um, kind of sheer ribbon up with the lace trim. And I'm kind of just hand cranking it through a bit and just trying my best to keep it kind of lined up. I could have gone through and used pins, but I hate using pins. I hate them. They're so like effective, but time consuming. It's very conflicting. Um, so I just try to get halfway decent at keeping everything lined up um and so once I got to the end I didn't even detach it I just kind of you know left the needle through but lifted the foot and rotated it around and now I'm just attaching the other side going just a couple inches at a time like this sewing machine has the capacity to do over a thousand stitches per minute um I as a sewing machine user do not um, for the most part, like whenever I'm doing like just hems or something, yeah, I can go for days, but for little stuff like this, I'd rather keep it nice and tight and clean change of camera angles. Um, and I'm kind of measuring out along where the underwire sits, um, on the bra and cutting out two of that length. Um, cause at the time, future Vaughn in sight, um, at the time I thought I was going to do the lacy trim down at the bottom as well. I ended up not doing that um, just because I felt like it interfered with the drape and movement of the uh, why am I blurry um, of the belt or of the uh, the bead fringe, and so I ended up using that piece that I'm making right now for the belt. Uh, no, no such thing as wasted effort. And this is just a, a different view of the same thing that I did um, in the previous camera angle. I love a good sewing machine though. Um, saves me so much headache. I used to hand sew all of this stuff, which was a pain. Um, just in that it was so time consuming. Trimming off my loose threads. You can see how that looks. Change of camera angle again. Um, I have the two pieces that I've just sewn. 
And I actually think I'm going to go through and attach the bead fringe first because I want that kind of hanging out from underneath the, uh, <clears throat> the lace. So you can see I pinpointed a spot, like, well, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see, um, where the trim is at its longest point and I'm keeping that centered and I'm actually stitching that to the crossbar, like, merge in between the cups. Um, that way I can build out from the edges on each side, but I wanted, it was very important to me to keep that very centered up, um, even if it meant sacrificing like about an inch off of, you know, the, uh, the free end. And I'm just coming through and in the lace trim setup, there are these little loops, almost like the picots and tatting. I just recently learned how to tat, by the way. Um, and of course, classic Vaughn, I'm completely off the screen. I don't even know why I do this, like... Sorry guys, thank you for being patient, but it's like, I'm running out of patience with myself. And it's people who've been like, oh, we'll just mark a square on the thing, and it's like, but in the camera setup, the camera keeps shifting. Anyways, excuses. Um, but I'm, I'm looping through the uh, trim, and then kind of whip stitching through the edge of the bra, um, to really give it, like, I want it to be secure. I'm doing probably a stitch every quarter inch. And that's six centimeters or millimeters for um, y'all metric folks. And just kind of coming through, trimming the tape off of the end. And I don't have the trim coming up all the way along the wire because you have to keep in mind that's right where your arms are going to be. And any trim that get that is there is going to get like bunched up, and um, is going to suffer a lot from that movement underneath your arm. So. You know, not to mention you're going to have like little rough spots, like sore spots from where your arms are rubbing. And now I'm coming back through and restitching on top of what I just did. Bind my thread off. Do, do, do. I really love the way that this bra came out though, guys. <laughs> and then I'm just going to do the same thing building off to the other side. The hardest part about stitching this trim onto the bra is um, to whenever to keep try to keep from getting tangled into the bead fringe, um, because it's like that's such a headache. So I'm trying really hard to keep the bead fringe very much over here and to keep my thread that I'm sewing with very much over on the other side because if like if I can just segregate them, keep them separated completely. Um, then maybe I won't tangle as much and I still end up tangling. But the more layers we get on the bra, the harder and harder of a time I have with that. That's also typically whenever I'm working with bras, I'll start with from the bottom and kind of work my way over because I'm right-handed. So that lets me build the fringe this way, leaving me as much clean space as possible to operate on on this side. Um, so hopefully that'll be helpful to you guys. And so I'm just kind of stitching this down to the net mesh you know, fabric um, there on the side, stitching back through a little ways. I cut a chunk of the workout and editing. <laughs> I love the way that these bras look, and I haven't been able to find them, at least not at our local Walmart. So I think um, I'm going to find the closest equivalent as what I can down in the video, and I'll put a link to that down in the video description. But yeah, super pleased with how symmetrical that came out. Um, but yeah, also the type of bra that this is, you don't have to use a push-up bra. Um, I enjoy using them because I like the aesthetic of tons of cleavage, just all pushed up. Um, but I do recommend using a padded bra, even if it's just one of those thinly lined t-shirt bras. You want it to be able to hold its structure even through all of the beadwork that you're putting on it. Um, and the reason why, like this one's like a double push up, like it says it adds two cup sizes. And the reason I do that is because the bra base that I was using was like a 36C. Um, an A cup still can wear this top. They are not going to have as dramatic of a cleavage effect, but I mean, our mannequins are A cups and I want to be able to put this on our mannequin and the cups not collapse in. So here, I actually, I sucked it up and used some pins because I wanted to make sure that it was equidistant from the edge, top edge of the bra as I worked. And I'm just going through and doing the same thing, kind of stitching along. I got it about three quarters of an inch in from the edge to make room for attaching that black lace trim that we did a little earlier. And just uh, 
I also want to keep it very seamless on the inside of the cup so I'm just snagging a little bit of the top fabric as well as some of the foam um, of the bra and that's um before any of y'all have the opportunity to ask I have made my own bra bases before it was a ton of work so much work now I mean totally worth it it was like the best fitted bra I'd ever had but so much work and it's like this outfit ended up taking about four hours to do the top and the belt and you know everything just with all the hand stitching and so um not to mention the trims like 15 bucks a yard and I used like two yards of it um in addition to all of the lace like is is an expensive and time consuming project um and then with the tutu that um I made off screen if I remember to future Vaughn will put a link to my how to make a tutu tutorial somewhere up on the screen and if it doesn't make it on the screen hopefully I'll at least have put it down in the video description but um I, I sold this one for 200 uh, which honestly was probably a little low but we were at a convention and they the lady who bought it got a couple of other outfits as well so I, I cut her a bit of a deal but um and I feel like for something that has this much work into it and has a lifetime repair warranty, yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Like, I'm excited for it. She looked amazing in it. <laughs> okay, so now I'm doing the lace and ribbon trim. I had just folded the end over, oh, under because I didn't want any... I mean, it's not going to unravel really, but it gives it a clean edge. And I just have it lined up. And at first I had the lace folded down and I was stitching from the back. Then I ended up opening it back up and um, stitching in from the front, hooking through the lace, ribbon, and um, padding of the cup. But yeah, so much of this is edited out, you guys. And I had it on like five times speed. So <laughs> it gives you kind of some ideas. Um, of how time intensive this is and again you'll notice I'm functioning with all of my beadwork down here and all of my thread that's happening and functioning up top so in an effort to not be as miserable um cause I hate whenever it gets all tangled up because all I want to do is get done with the project and see the final result like I'm so impatient <laughs> totally worth it though you guys yeah, and don't ever feel like you can't, um, yeah, right here I'm binding off the thread. Uh, don't feel like you can't change hand angles or, you know, anything like that. Do what's comfortable as well as effective because if it's not comfortable and it's not effective, you're going to hate it and you're not going to want to keep doing it. <sighs> so it's, gosh, I love the kind of, Moulin Rouge, you know, if any of y'all saw that movie, if you haven't, I highly recommend it. Um, but uh, just that whole aesthetic of like, almost like a French Western or like something that, um, you know, that episode of Firefly where, hey Randy, wasn't, is it Anara from Firefly, the companion? Mm -hmm. Is that her name? Yeah, am, I, so. am I saying it right? So. The companion from Firefly. In the episode whenever they were out visiting the Outer Rim planet and there was a companion out there. The kind of stuff that they would wear. Like a space brothel. That's what I'm trying to make here. So at this point I had, sorry I talked through it, but I had held up the lace and uh, ribbon trim to the bottom and decided I didn't want it. So now I have some very heavy stiff ribbon. Um, and I'm going to go through and with my sewing machine, sew the trim onto it, which really in hindsight, I've should have been attaching the lace first because I was going to do some lace underneath it, but, um, and I'm hand sewing, kind of binding off the end to keep it folded under because I don't want it unraveling. And I always start off with a few hand cranked stitches before just powering it through the sewing machine. And this one, that's why I usually do it a couple inches at a time, is because I was doing it and they just whoop. Of course, I could have avoided that if I had pinned it, but shut up. <laughs> Don't confuse me with the facts. <laughs> Y'all know I'm kidding, but also halfway serious. Um, so before getting to the end, I've gone ahead and re-threaded my needle, and I'm stitching closed that end as well. 
I usually do most of my belts for carrying in the booth at around a 30 to like probably 36 inch actually I, I just do a yardstick um, because I don't want to have it so long that our petite clients can't wear them because they're just too big but I also don't want to have them so small that our curvier um, clients can't wear them as well like you know what I mean it's like so we try to find a middle ground whenever I'm doing custom work for folks um I go through and make it like specific I find like if you have a 36 inch waist and a 40 inch hip I'll make it at around a 38 and then like give it some extra ribbon to tie with sometimes I'll do buckles but for the most part we do ribbing because that's how the top ties but again and so I, I I do that based on just the client um so here I'm like Ugh, I don't have enough um so I'm having to make real quick just some more and I was gonna try to do it on and I was like I'll do one thing at a time <laughs> so I'm doing just a little section of it because that's the only thing is I'm used to working with a lot of like chain mail and leather where the material itself isn't horribly expensive but it's very time consuming um whereas with textiles oh my gosh this stuff is so expensive <laughs> like I mean 15 bucks a yard fortunately we were able to get it you know on like it was 50% off trims and stuff but still you know uh if you use a couple of layers of it eek <laughs> and that's also another question for um if other Vaughn was like well hey what about how do you do your pricing um <laughs> so for anybody who might be wondering um I do my pricing at if I had paid full price for the material because that way if I'm recreating the piece or doing a repair on it and that material is no longer on sale or I can't use a coupon I mean just whatever kind of extraneous circumstance might be happening I plan for that um, that's me fighting with my needle <laughs> trying to get it threaded it's also a weird mirror image happening right now huh because <laughs> I'm looking at my workspace and I was like this is backwards from how it usually is oh well <laughs> and so I had attached some four inch lace onto another wide ribbon and I'm coming through and I have it kind of divided up so I'm adding in a layer underneath because I knew I'd be layering this over a tutu and leaving just um, the loose fringe work it would get really lost in between the segments of tool. So by doing a base layer of ribbon underneath it, it helps. It still allows the fringe to like move around and stuff, but not to get lost in the underskirt. It also makes it look super cute if you wear it without anything under, like just over some bottoms. So these were some flowers that I got at Hobby Lobby. Again, 50% off. I eat that stuff up. Um, but with these ones, you can actually pull the stem out and then put a rivet through the silk floral. And so you can see I'm kind of digging them out. I used, I think, the small or the extra small. I can't, I can't remember. Um, but I just feed through, the, they're quick rivets, so you feed through the stem part from the back. Um, and again, on the ends here, just like how I did on the bra, I fold it and then I place the ring and then I fold it again. If you guys are interested, I'll actually do a real-time tutorial of this where I talk you guys through it. Because um, I need to make another one of these in like an ivy leaf pattern. Just because. <laughs> so yeah, and whenever I do the flower setup, sometimes I'll just have them clustered at the end and at the center. Sometimes I'll have them equidistant all the way through. But yeah, so you can see I just, I pull the stem right out of the back. Um... And that makes for a super cute little little floral accents and I find the center and I'm doing it again and I don't know what species of flower this is supposed to be or if it's realistic at all but for the stem the stems like I think well I had one right next to me that I can't find now um I think they're like six or seven, possibly eight dollars a stem. But if you get it for fifty percent off, you know, at the Hobby Lobby, um, then suddenly, you know, it still it boils down to at least fifty cents a flower. 
Um, but it's better than with like the lilies and stuff. Those are like three, three bucks of flowers. So it's like, but they're so pretty <laughs> and it's still less expensive than actually having to make them by hand. Um, cause I have done that before. Whew, that was, uh, that was an experience that now I know I don't really want to do that. <laughs> And so, yeah, this is just how I'm finishing the belt. Coffee seems like a good idea. <laughs> so, yeah, I just punch a hole right through all the layers. Um, I try to avoid punching through the trim um, because it can, ver it can unravel pretty quickly. Um, but uh, just through all the different layers of, like, uh, lace and ribbon... Yeah, I just punch right through it. I try to leave the whole punch in there until I'm directly ready. Like, it's sped up right now, so you can't tell. But, um, until I've got the rivet in hand to pass through. That way, I, it doesn't get, like, shuffled. Now, here, at the t for the top, I'm punching through, very specifically, just the ribbon and lace to put a, um, a flower there through the center. <laughs> I don't know why I just smiled at the camera, but hey! I think I was smiling at Future Vaughn, so hey, Past Vaughn. Yeah, so just a cute little flower right there in the middle. Do, 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 do. So yeah, I used a slightly larger hole punch to punch a hole in the shoulders. But that's not what I'm doing right now. Right now I'm still setting flowers. I think I'm using the 1 8 inch hole punch. Because I like, on, especially on a stretchier fabric like this, I like a really tight hole that way you don't have to worry about like the back of the rivet like feeding through or something yeah so I've got like two flowers clustered up on each shoulder and then just one in the middle putting the rivet cap on using the rivet setter and just hammering the crap out of it <laughs> is um the technical terminology But yeah, I love, love the colors and everything. Hey, okay, everybody. So, so I was talking now. Jeez, babe, you're wrecked. I've done all the sewing and everything. Like, the last was like thing to do is to do the ribbon to uh, be able to tie the outfit. Now, off camera, I'm going to be making a, like, tutu, like, petticoat um, to go with this. I'm doing the ribbon at about three yards, and that'll give us, it should be plenty. So that's one full arm span, and from a sternum to my hand. I'm gonna fold those over. Um, and now I'm gonna line up the ends of the ribbon. Sorry for all the poor lighting and everything. And then this hole that we punched here on the shoulder, I'm actually going to feed the ribbon through to the front. And just pull it through. And then do a little bit of a lark's head knot. Just like that. You know, and I think I'm going to have it go the other way. Feed it through from the front to the back. Sorry. Uh, experimentation. And the reason is cause that way it'll hold it flush to the skin. Whereas like this, it was poking out kind of funny. Okay. Trying that again. Front to back. I used to put eyelets in this part, but there's quite a bit of stretch here. And um, it just... It just that it didn't hold on to the fabric very well so I don't really bother with it so much anymore because all of it is encased in the ribbon now. So there's one side. And don't mind JLo here, she's just naked. <laughs> okay, folded this ribbon in half, pushing it through from the front to the back and Lark's head knotting it. 
And so from here, the way that we're gonna tie it is it goes over the bosom, over the shoulders, we'll bring it around to the back, and this shoulder, like, they'll cross like this, do you see? And so the loop here on this side will get fed through right there, and the loop here on this side will get fed through right there. And then we're gonna kinda cinch it up a bit. Now this bra is made for, like, a little bit larger um, than what JLo is, but you get the idea. And then in the booth, if I needed to size this down to someone, what I would do is I would actually bring in, like, and kind of tailor the fabric here on the sides, um, to make these side straps a little bit shorter. So that's how it sits in the front. You guys, it makes such a difference actually being on the mannequin, I do think. But man, I love the way that trim, like, can you imagine dancing in this with the movement of that? Okay, and so now to do the belt, let's see how much ribbon, we've got quite a bit of ribbon left here on the spool, so I'm not gonna worry about trying to use it up. I'm gonna do an arm span per side. And then I'm going to find it at the halfway point, just like we did for the top. And now on each side, again, I'm just going to Lark's head knot it, just like that. Now, this might be kind of large on JLo, but we'll see. and just sits right like that. And then we just tie a cute little bow. It actually fits her pretty well, I think. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm gonna make a big, like, bustly petticoat tutu to go underneath this. It actually looks like I can open it up just a little bit more. Don't have to bring the ends all the way together. Um, and this would also layer very well over an underbust corset, I do think. So this is a fantastic belly dance or burlesque piece. Especially with all this nice kind of shimmery trim. But if you get like the tutus that I make are much longer in the back than they are in the front, so it'll have a very nice kind of bustle effect. But um, especially for the burlesque dancers that I've worked with, it's really great to be able to um, kind of take the layers off one piece at a time. I also feel like it makes it a much more modular piece where you could layer this over a corset, you could put some fairy wings with it, you could make this a little bit more steampunk if you wanted. I mean, just infinite possibilities, you guys. Um, <laughs> so, uh, as always, thank you guys so much for, um, for hanging out with me while I made this outfit. Um, <laughs> if you enjoy my tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, uh, please check me out on Patreon. There's a link down in the video description below uh, where pledges start at just a dollar um, and then kind of work their way up from there. But guys, I'm so excited about this piece. Like, so excited. I really love it. Hopefully, it will find a new home. <laughs> but, um, yeah, thanks again, guys. I'll see you guys around. Bye.